If the Earth stopped spinning, one side would be stuck in permanent daylight. The heat turned up to 11, creating an endless desert. The other side would be a barren Arctic wasteland. But every six months, the climates would switch. It's not going to be fun for everybody, but it would be somewhat survivable. Maybe. But no, it's not the desert that would kill us. No, what kills us would be the natural disasters. Tsunamis the size of mountains, earthquakes breaking apart the Earth's crust and detonating volcanoes, and winds up to four times stronger than any that have ever been measured on our planet. Within minutes, they'd kill everything. They'd likely be dead before any of that happens. Because if the Earth stopped spinning, it would be so much worse than you could possibly imagine. Now, there are two ways in which the Earth's rotation could be brought to a halt. It could either happen suddenly or it could gradually slow down over time. First of all, we're going to look at a sudden stop because, well, you'd be dead a whole lot faster. Currently, the Earth is rotating at excess of about 1600 kilometers an hour at the equator. This speed decreases as you move to different lines of latitude, but even England is still moving at 1000 kilometers an hour. That is extremely fast, but you don't notice it because you've been moving that speed your entire life, just like you don't really feel the speed at which a car or an airplane is traveling when they're cruising along, you don't feel the Earth's rotation because the speed is constant. It's only when we accelerate or decelerate that we feel these changes of speed. Now going back to the car example, even though you don't feel the speed at which you're traveling when it's constant, you and your car are both moving at the same speed. But of course, you and your car are still two separate objects. As you undoubtedly learned in some gruesome driver's ed video, your body doesn't just stop because the car did. That's why we have seatbelts to prevent our bodies from continuing to travel at speed into the windshield. This same principle holds true when we apply it to the entire planet. If the Earth were to abruptly stop spinning, you would still be traveling at a thousand kilometers an hour or more. That's nowhere near escape velocity, so you wouldn't be flung off the planet or anything like that, but you would still be flung due east at that speed. Your body would suddenly be launched faster than a commercial jet, likely leaving you airborne at least briefly before you tumble along the ground or collide with other objects. And obviously, this wouldn't just happen to people, it would happen to everything that wasn't firmly bolted down. Cars, trees, even sands would be sent sailing at speeds that would almost assuredly prove lethal. But let's say you managed somehow to survive that initial jolt without receiving blunt force trauma from a collision, or having all of your flesh torn and scraped from your body at hundreds of kilometers an hour. It is incredibly unlikely any humans on Earth would survive this, but if you did, you still would be out of the woods. Far from it. Next would be the natural disasters, largely a occurring simultaneously. Like we said, anything that wasn't firmly attached to the planet would be sent east at incredible speeds, and that includes both wind and water. The oceans would form into massive tsunamis that were hundreds or even thousands of meters tall before crashing down on the Earth, killing everything in their wake. Now, the fastest wind ever measured on Earth was just over 400 kilometers an hour, and at the equator, winds would be four times that speed. Imagine the most devastating hurricane footage that you've ever seen, and know that that would look like a light drizzle compared to the devastation that these winds could unleash. Anything that remained of buildings or man-made objects would be torn apart. Centuries of erosion would take place in minutes. The winds, full of particles and debris, would be moving so quickly the friction could ignite fires. They would even be so strong that they could push Earth's tectonic plates, resulting in massive earthquakes. And that doesn't even take into account what those winds would do to a human body. We'd say that your body would be torn apart, but that incorrectly assumes that any pieces remaining after the wind would be recognizable as human. They wouldn't be. You'd simply be gone. Now, as for how bad the seismic and volcanic activity would be, well, that depends on exactly how the Earth stopped. There would definitely be some, thanks to the movement of the plates caused by the wind, but it's hard to say whether the plates would still be moving as they were when the Earth was spinning, or if they too would have come to a halt. The worst case scenario would be if the plates were not only still moving, but moving at different speeds. If that were the case, the collisions could form large fissures in the Earth's crust, causing it to crack and break, and creating unprecedented levels 
cause of volcanic activity. If the planet were to suddenly stop spinning, the resulting devastation would wipe out nearly all life on the planet. Bacteria are really resilient, so not everything would die, and eventually some new forms of life would develop. But all life, as we know it, would instantly be ended. Unless you happen to be chilling with your polar bear friends at the North Pole when this happened, that is. If that were the case, you'd probably be fine as the Earth's rotation at the poles is virtually zero. It wouldn't take you long to figure out that something had happened, but anybody living directly at either pole would likely be the only ones to survive the initial disaster. But let's say the Earth didn't stop spinning so abruptly. Would humanity survive if the planet gradually slowed down at a rate that didn't trigger, you know, instant death? If the Earth was to gradually slow down until it stopped spinning, perhaps over the course of a year, things wouldn't be as immediately bad. But while it was slowing down, there still could be an increase in natural disasters. The Earth is made up of different layers, and these are able to move independently from one another. It's a bit like the earlier analogy of you in a car, just on a planetary scale. If these layers didn't slow down at exactly the same rate as one another, the massive amounts of friction from the Earth's layers scraping against one another would result in worldwide seismic and volcanic activity. It wouldn't be pleasant, but it would wouldn't be civilization ending either. But once the Earth had finally ground to a halt, seismic activity would be a thing of the past. Hurricanes would cease to exist as well, as they are unable to form without the Earth's rotation. This is because Earth's rotation produces the Coriolis effect, which, despite what Lisa Simpson has told you, it does not affect which direction the water will drain from a sink. What it does affect is the flow of air, deflecting warm air from the equator to the east in the northern hemisphere and to the west in the southern hemisphere. This deflection of air currents is one of the driving forces that allow hurricanes to form and it would no longer exist. However, that also means that the equator's warm air would no longer be deflected away from the poles, nor would the Arctic's cold air be deflected away from the equator. Rainforests could become barren deserts, and deserts could become fertile lands. Alright, so no more earthquakes or hurricanes? Sounding pretty good. But that doesn't mean that climate and weather conditions overall are going to improve. Uh, not by a long shot. Some of the things that we've talked about so far are more obvious than others, but we haven't addressed the most obvious thing that would change if the Earth stopped rotating. The length of a day. Currently, it takes 23 hours and 56 minutes for the Earth to rotate once on its axis. Add in the Earth's rotation around the Sun, and it takes 24 hours for the same point on the planet to become tangential to the Sun again, give or take a few seconds. You probably know this period of time better as the unit that is a day. With the Earth no longer spinning, this would obviously not be the case. There would still be a cycle of day and night, but one day would now be the same length as one year. Each part of the planet would have six consecutive months of daylight, followed by six consecutive months of darkness. And at first, this wouldn't be that bad, at least not for the people who were facing the sun when the Earth stopped. Those first couple of days might seem like a nice summer vacation, but as the days went on, the temperature would only continue to rise as the planet's surface was baked in persistent sunlight. Before long, temperatures could reach 100 degrees Celsius, that's 212 Fahrenheit. Now you're probably quite familiar with that temperature because it's the boiling point of water. Not only would this be unbearable and unlivable for most plants and animals, but the water would boil off and evaporate, turning everything into an arid desert. On the opposite side of the planet, devoid of sunlight, temperatures would quickly plummet to minus 55 Fahrenheit or minus 48 Celsius. Again, this would be completely unlivable. But all hope isn't lost, not quite yet. You probably already know that despite every map or globe you've ever seen, the map isn't a perfect sphere. It's actually a bit bulbous and bloated in the center, and that's thanks to the Earth's rotation. The centripetal force exerted on the ocean by the rotation of the Earth pushes the water towards the equator. As a result, sea level at the equator is about 21 kilometers higher than it is at the poles, and with the Earth no longer moving, the force on the water will will be gone and the oceans will recede back to the poles. This will have a few major effects. First, the planet would actually be as close to a perfect sphere as it was ever going to be. Second, the north and south poles would be completely flooded. Not just the poles themselves, but large areas of existing continents would be submerged in water as the sea level at more extreme latitudes rose by multiple kilometers. But those areas would only be flooded because of water leaving the equator. With that water gone, what were once ocean floors would now become part of the landmass that made up the Earth's new megacontinent. There would undoubtedly still be islands and stuff, but the majority of land would now be one singular continent wrapped around the center of the planet. This would allow a person to circumnavigate the globe on foot rather than needing airplanes or boats. And that's important because the only way humanity could possibly survive under these conditions would be if everybody kept moving. Just like your friend with a drinking problem that likes to remind you that it's always five o'clock somewhere, in a world where the Earth was no longer rotating, it would always be twilight somewhere. While half the planet was boiling and the other half was frozen, there would be a couple of borders between
between the two where the sun was either still rising or still setting. And fun fact, the sun would now rise in the west and set in the east. But in this twilight zone, temperatures should actually remain fairly comfortable for humans. The only problem is that it would always be moving, and at normal walking speed, it would take 334 days to walk around the Earth. That would only leave half an hour every night to sleep. Even if cars or some other vehicle were used to travel longer distances at a time so that a tribe of nomads could stay in the same place for a few days, things like food and water would still be a huge problem. Most animal and plant life wouldn't survive under these conditions, making a traditional hunter-gatherer society nearly impossible. And you wouldn't be able to stay in any one place long enough to partake in agriculture. And that's a big problem, and it's one that we actually don't have a solution to. Of course, there's the chance that none of this would matter anyway. While the exact rate at which this would happen isn't fully known, if the Earth stopped rotating, rotating would result in a gradual weakening of the magnetic field. Without that field to protect us, the planet would be bombarded with cosmic radiation. Once that happens, everything else would be irrelevant as the massive amount of radiation would end nearly all life on the planet, save for a few extremophar bacteria. Now, theoretically, it should be possible for either of these scenarios to occur. In fact, the Earth's rotation is slowing down even as we speak. The Moon is tidally locked to the Earth, and Earth is slowly becoming tidally locked to the Moon. Very, very slowly, though. Every hundred years, the time it takes for the planet to rotate increases by about 1.4 milliseconds. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but it was only a few hundred million years ago that one Earth day was only 22 hours. But realistically, there's nothing that's going to accelerate this process, and the planet will be swallowed up by the Sun long before any of this presents any sort of problem. As for an abrupt stop to our rotation, that's theoretically possible as well, at least in the short term. To all our knowledge, all celestial bodies rotate to some extent. It's a natural result of the process that creates them in the first place. But this rotation can be disrupted by powerful enough collisions, like with another planet-sized body. A full stop would likely only be temporary, as the Sun's gravity would cause Earth to rotate again, even if it resulted in us being tidally locked with the Sun, but it should be possible for something to cause the Earth to suddenly stop rotating for a period of time. Luckily, if that was happening, you wouldn't have to worry about tumbling 1600 kilometers an hour or being crushed to death by tsunamis. Any impact that could impart enough force to actually stop Earth from rotating would instantly kill all of us before any of those other things become a problem. So that's nice.